Now, why would Thrawn risk everything to honor his deal with the Great Mothers on Peridia? He could have easily just left as soon as the Eye of Sion arrived in his new galaxy. Well, the answer is more than just Thrawn always keeps his promises. Lannister always pays his debts. He always calculates several steps ahead. The first step is just getting off the planet, but his alliance with the Great Mothers has much bigger implications on what happens after they get back to the known universe. And then in episode eight, change what I originally thought was in the these actual coffins they pulled out from the catacombs of this ancient monastery. Now let's begin with what Ezra said in episode 8. Any ideas of what we're up against? Look, Thrawn found this place. He woke up the witches, rebuilt his starship. It wasn't safe to come here alone. Ezra uses the phrase, woke up the witches. So these great mothers were in some sort of stasis or hibernation. So I no longer think that these are even coffins that were in the catacombs. These are stasis pods. Now I went back and I took a closer look at one of these pods and I noticed some sort of electronic controls on them. And they seem to be hermetically sealed. Plus they have repulsor lifts. Coffins don't need any of this. These aren't dead witches. They're in stasis, waiting to be awakened. Release the Kraken! Now this brings up an obvious question. Why are all these witches in this hibernation state? Are they hiding or protecting themselves from this greater power that Balin is talking about? They seem eager to leave this place. Maybe we should too. Perhaps they flee a power greater than their own. Now, based on Balin's final scene, it has something to do with the Mortis Gods or Abeloth. Whatever it is, the witches are wanting to get off the planet in a hurry. So let's assume these are witches that are alive and well and in stasis pods. Why is it so important for Thrawn to risk everything, his entire escape plan, just to stay an extra three days to get all these pods aboard the Chimera? Well, you can make that argument. He's simply just being true to his word. He makes an agreement and he sticks to the terms. And I think that's absolutely true, but I think there's much more. More. This is a calculated risk. I think his grand plan and his willingness to stay an extra three days on Peridia with the Great Mothers is a chess move to accomplish his ultimate goal. Yes, his immediate goal is to escape, but he's got a much larger goal in mind, and that is rebuilding the Empire. Now, the reason for rebuilding the Empire is something I'm going to get into in just a few minutes. But right now, what Thrawn is doing with the witches is building loyalty. If he can revive the Night Sisters population on Dathomir, he would create a loyalty that would be a huge advantage in the wars to come. He would essentially be saving an entire race. Back in the Clone Wars, the Night Sisters were all but wiped out by Grievous and the droid army. They came to Dathomir on orders of Count Dooku and wiped out all the witches, including Mother Talzin. We are fallen sisters. Ventress will need the aid of the undead army to achieve victory. And a few of them, like Marin in the Jedi Fallen Order and Survivor games, survived, but the planet was essentially all undead witches. The Great Mother's loyalty would be huge if Thrawn can restart their civilization on Dathomir. And not only would this alliance be beneficial, it just so happens that Dathomir is located extremely close to Mandalore. Now, it seems to me after the events of Season 3 of The Mandalorians that having a planet of witches on Thrawn's side and in proximity to an important planet of the New Republic would be extremely valuable. Now, Mandalore is not technically part of the New Republic, but with Bo-Katan leading the Mandalorians, I think it's safe to say that the planet would probably be a pretty powerful ally to the New Republic. And what is your security concern? Mandalorians. What? They continue to be an issue? They do. This could provide a key battleground area for the war to come, and Dathomir could even become an imperial base of some sort, being in such a strategic location. Now when Thrawn asks Morgan Elsbeth to sacrifice herself, this exchange happens. The Jedi are advancing swiftly. At this rate, they make it on board the ship, which would be problematic. We require a little more time. For the Empire. Oh, 
Now, once the Great Mothers officially make her a night sister, her allegiance is to them and their people, which is why she says for Dathomir. Her sacrifice will help Thrawn save their species. Thrawn gains a powerful ally to the Empire and will essentially have an army of Dathomiri witches in his arsenal. Now, Thrawn is known for having a philosophy of forming alliances in order to further his cause. He's willing to form alliances with enemies, other species in the chaos like the Pakash, and other governments. So this makes complete sense that he's thinking ahead and not just about escaping the planet. He's planning his war on the New Republic. Now, if you haven't read the Thrawn trilogy or the Thrawn Ascendancy trilogy, you might be wondering why Thrawn is wanting to destroy the New Republic in the first place and rebuild the Empire. It is for the Empire, the security of our galaxy. Well, it isn't just because he wants to rule the galaxy. That's not at all what Thrawn's about. Since the beginning, and when I say the beginning, I mean his entry into the Chiss expansionary defense fleet as a cadet, Thrawn has had one single mission. That is to protect the Chiss. See, back during the Clone Wars, when he met Anakin, the Chiss faced a threat that was bigger and more evil than any empire or any Sith Lord. Something that he felt was not only a threat to the Chiss, but to every species in the chaos and in the known galaxy. It was a species called the Grisks. Now, I have a full video that I'm going to link at the end of this that goes deep into Thrawn's reasonings for joining the Empire and fighting this much larger threat. But during his days under Palpatine, Thrawn knew that an Empire was much stronger under the Sith Lord compared to the inefficient, chaotic nature of the Galactic Republic and the self-serving politicians that make up the ruling parties. We have former Imperials working throughout every level of the New Republic government. They're citizens loyal to the Empire on every planet in this galaxy. And they have all taken an oath of loyalty. Long live the Empire! Long live the Empire! Long live the Empire. Long live the Empire doesn't sound like the kind of loyalty we're looking for. This New Republic is exactly the same. Now we saw a glimpse of this with Hera and her interactions with these clowns. So Thrawn knows that in order to save the galaxy from a much larger threat, and in the end, save the Chiss ascendancy, he needs to wipe out the New Republic government, build an army under one leader. What was first just a dream has become a frightening reality for those who may oppose us. Have an army consisting of a fleet of star destroyers, star fighters, witches, force wielders, and everything the Chiss Ascendancy brings in order to defeat the Grisks. Now, I want you to take a deeper dive with me into Thrawn's time with the Empire, why he joined, and learn more about the Grisks and the galactic threat they pose. But in order to do that, you gotta click this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and may the Force be with you.